Hello, everyone. I'm Larry Ridley, and you're tuned in to Madden 18 on EA Sports. In today's matchup, we've got a pair of running backs who are hoping for plenty of touches to come their way. It's Freeman's Falcons going up against Jay Ajayi's Eagles. For the call, let's send you out to the broadcast booth where we'll join our commentators, Brandon Guyton and Charles Davis. Thank you, Larry. It's the NFL on EA Sports as you take a look live there at Lincoln Financial Field in Philadelphia, PA. The scene in South Philly a few moments ago. Boy, the city of brotherly love is fired up. They're saying fly, Eagles, fly, as they get ready to match up with Matt Ryan and the Atlanta Falcons. Hi again, everybody. I'm Brandon Gordon. To my left, as always, Charles Davis and C.D. Larry highlighted a couple of running backs to keep an eye on here tonight. And I know you plan on doing just that. I certainly do. Let's face it, we're all going to check in on the quarterbacks and see what they do. But the running back who can take over a game, who can impose his will on the opposite defense, oh, that guy, that's a guy worth watching because he can definitely change the fortunes of his team. Here's the kicker, Jake Elliott, ready to get this one started. And off we go from Lincoln Financial Field. He spins away. And he'll probably wish he'd reconsidered here. It will cost him 10 yards as he's down at the 15. Offensively, here come the Atlanta Falcons and quarterback Matt Ryan, a crew that's battling some history this year, no doubt. Only seven teams that lost the Super Bowl the previous year have come back to make it again the next year, and only two of those teams actually won the game. I think that was, what, the 71 Cowboys and the 72 Dolphins. But Yes, that's good research. But the Falcons had a shaky early start, middle part of the season, make it a push late. Yeah, I like what they're doing late because it's a team that had every reason to just go, you know, it's not our year. Right? It's just not going to happen. They never gave up on that. Remember, they had that three-game losing streak lull in the middle of all of this. But you're right, making a push down the stretch. But they actually control what's going to happen in the division. If they end up winning out, they win the NFC South. And a very short pickup there across the 15 to the 16. Give him a couple on the carry there, second and eight. All right, let's look at the offense. Devontae Freeman, this is a guy that you wanted to talk about, so take it away. Brandon, have you seen a running back play with such joy as well as such fury? I love the way he runs the football and attacks defenses. Second down, Ryan. That's caught over the middle. Hooper. That catch good for five. It's third down. And the defense now for the Eagles. Fletcher Cox is a Pro Bowl, All-Pro talent at defensive tackle. And even though he didn't have his best year in 2016, still warranted double and triple teams from opposing offenses. If he's singled up, he usually finds his way into the opposing backfield to wreak a little bit of havoc. Third play of this opening drive as they're looking at a third and three. From the gun, it's Ryan. And unable to connect. If he had caught it, it would have been a first down. Instead, it's fourth. Everything about that play tells you about today's NFL offenses and what they're asking out of running backs. You can't just be a guy who can run the football. You have to be able to catch it as well. And he didn't get that done on that play. On fourth down, here's Matt Bosher on the punt. This is brought in at the 21. Nice job bringing that one back. 14 on the return. And the Eagles will have it taking over first and 10. Philadelphia Eagles offense having a great year as they take the field in. Carson Wentz was a big part of that great year. Now it's up to that man, Nick Foles. But, hey, a good chance with what they did under Carson Wentz that they might not have to play another road game until, well, maybe going to the Super Bowl in Minnesota. How about that? He set a pretty good base, didn't he? And Nick Foles, in his first game as a starter in 2017, against the Giants, brought them from a pretty good deficit. 
Brought him all the way back, got the win, and people are now remembering he had a season. In 2013, 27 touchdowns, two interceptions. He won't equal those kind of numbers, but he is good enough to pilot Philadelphia into the playoffs, and I think deep into the playoffs. And hard running's going to get him over the 40 to the 42. It's a seven-yard carry to set them up with a second and three. If these kinds of lanes are available, you have to feel like he's going to have a pretty big game on the ground. Yeah, you can tell early on he's got a little burst in his step, and that's a big pickup right there on first down. Three yards to go here on second down. The play action fake. They'll look to throw. It's hauled in by Torrey Smith. And he's able to get this one down to the 40 yard line. with it right side and they'll be inside the 35 now at the 34 yard line seven yards the pickup on the pitch and catch how about the timing on that one where they were in sync weren't they three-step drop balls out of his hands right to the tight end nice completion just like they do it in practice three yards remaining here on second down now out of the gun oh and now he bowls him over and able to break one tackle but then quickly brought down give him a yard on the run there and that's going to set up a third down and two and the tight end Zach Ertz is key in this offense as we get a look at the starters comes out of the factory known as Stanford which keeps putting out tight ends Zach Ertz one of the better ones we've seen in recent years So they run it on second down. Now let's see what third down brings here for the offense. They run again with a Jai. And he's able to pick up the first before he's taken down at the 27. They get five out of that one and it moves the chains. I know the game's changed. A lot of people would say it's evolved. Look, I'm a little bit Neanderthal, okay? I love this. No exotic formations, no misdirection. Just line up and run the darn ball, pick up the first down. I love it. Yeah, third and short, that's what you're supposed to do. Like you said, old school smash mouth football. all the time right and how much they practice not fumbling practice it preach it talk about it all the time you would think no one would ever turn it over yet they are humans out there running around and we just saw another one opportunistic by the defense here comes the falcon offense now as they get set to take over here and a three and out on that first drive we'll see if they can do better here they should have a better opportunity because the nerves should be settled now that first series everybody goes out a little extra emotion so now they get a chance to go back out and say, okay, now we're into the game. Let's go play and play as best we can. You almost get a mulligan then on that first drive. Sometimes it absolutely serves that way. You get a second opportunity. Nothing big happened. 
But then again, you didn't commit any mistakes either. Off you go. They run. Devontae Freeman. And he'll lose yardage here, going down back at the 28. It'll be a loss of one, and that'll bring up a second and 11. Well, you had to punt on your first drive, and on the first play of the second drive, you end up going backwards. I would dare say they need something good to happen right here, right now. So now 11 yards to go for this offensive unit. It's second down. Freeman again. Found a little room there as he's up to about the 37. They get nine yards back on the run there, and they're left with a much more makeable third and two. But you've got to give kudos to your offensive line and the guy carrying the ball because they were in a second and long situation. It seemed pretty dire, but they brought it back to third and manageable with that run. And the Eagles will go with an extra DB here as they prepare for a stop on third. Thinking pass all the way. They'll run it now out of the gun. And he'll get this up to about the 38-yard line. Just a one-yard pick up there, and it'll be fourth down. I'll bet they thought they had picked that one up because it was a third and two call. And they got awfully close. Now we're at fourth and inches. I wonder if they think they're feeling lucky here <laughs> and maybe want to go pick it up. Here's Matt Bosher now as he'll punt it away for the second time. And he gets this away, and look at this. This is a good one. And that is much too long. That's into the end zone for a touchback. The Eagles offense now, they head back on the field. And they got across the 50 last time, but fumbled and turned it over, so they'll be looking to have a short-term memory here, Mr. Davis. Not only a short-term memory, but a whole lot better ball security. <laughs> because if they take care of the ball, continue to move it, their chances of scoring some points, they've got to feel pretty good about. They thought they had things moving in the right direction last time. Fumbles, they don't just affect you on offense. They affect your overall team because now your defense has to make that stand up. Now a play fake here on first down. And he just gets rid of it, throws it away. The wise move there looked like nobody open. Now second down. And here now the defensive starters for Atlanta. When Atlanta drafted Desmond Trufant and Robert Alford, they thought they were going to get some young corners that would grow into the job, and boy, have they been right. Desmond Trufant, Pro Bowl in 2015. Unfortunately, hurt in 2016, wasn't able to play in the Super Bowl. Might have been the difference down the stretch against the New England Patriots. Ten yards still left on second down. There's Foles. And this one taken in on the right sideline, but not in the field of play. They say it's incomplete. The throw led him a little too far. It brings up third down. Out routes are always timing routes. And if the timing's off just a little bit, it can really throw off a play. It looked like he led him a little too much there. Yeah, there was a fraction of a second because he caught it, just couldn't stay in bounds. Foles. Finding a safety valve here. That's complete. And he's got the first before he's brought down at the 39-yard line. And the play goes for 19 yards. Gives him a new set of downs. We can talk all we want about football being a game of strength and brawn. It's also a game of mismatches. And they're trying to create one there. Getting it to their back out of the backfield to make a bigger play. As we often say, get it to him in space. Let him use his leg. Yeah, if he can get a matchup against a linebacker or maybe a defensive end dropping out in a zone blitz, he's going to win that battle just about every time. Now it's a Jay and an alley to run. 
Allen finding some room at midfield. And he'll be taken down, but not before he gets into enemy territory. 12 more yards there and another first down. Well, they came into this game saying it was important that they set the tone and show that they can run the football. I believe that they've done that here in the first quarter. down and 10 now for the offensive group. Off the play fake, he'll look to throw. And he is out of bounds inside the 35. Another nice gain, 16 yards there and a first down again. That's a matchup. Maybe they go back to their outer third of the field as this game continues. Yeah, I think back to my high school coach, John Ford, he used to say when we got big plays early in a game or good plays, he'd always say, follow it away, lad, follow it away, because he'd want to come back to it later in a key situation. They may come back to this one a little more often than that. Didn't he say laddie or did he say lad? Yeah, it just depended on what he was feeling at the okay. moment. Okay, I thought, I thought that was the guy you told me about that he used to say laddie a lot. Laddie? When you heard laddie, he was usually in a pretty good mood. Lad? Eh. He'll look to throw. And no escaping this time as he'll go down. They got him for a sack. Adrian Claiborne. Coming hard that time. He's able to run him down for a loss of 12. Well, they were coming out of the 4-3 defensively. Pressure coming off that right side from the DM. And that's the blind side of most quarterbacks. If you're right-handed, that's the side you don't see quite as well. And that's why you rely on your left tackle, maybe your highest paid offensive lineman, to take care of you. In this situation, that didn't happen. Second down, couldn't connect. Now it's third. The best receivers we know always tease their quarterbacks that, hey, no matter what you do, you cannot overthrow me. Well, guess what? That's exactly what happened on that play. Normally, they time it up pretty well, but on that one, he just overshot him. And now some motion before the snap. And this will be our first penalty of the night's proceedings. That's going to set him back five yards. Still third down. Seventh play of this drive coming up, but a long way to go on third down. From the midfield stripe, they'll look to throw. He's going to leave this for his running back. It's complete. And he'll get it down to the 47 here. Call it a gain of three. And that's going to make it fourth down. That's certainly playing down in distance very well by the defense, isn't it? Take whatever you want underneath by all means. So on fourth down, here's the veteran left-footed punter Donnie Jones to kick it away. Back deep here, Andre Roberts. And no return here. Where will they spot it? They say just outside the 20-yard line. Here are the Falcons as their offense heads back onto the field. And this is their third drive. Maybe the focus right now, not so much on points, but getting their first first down. And when you start off a game, you don't even think that's an issue, do you? But you go a drive, a second drive, no first down, that becomes an issue. Now you got to think about, okay, what kind of a play calling do I have to do to get us in a spot to pick that first one up?
The drive will start with a carry by Devontae Freeman. And he's brought down, getting this one up to about the 35. A really nice pickup of 14 yards, and it moves the sticks. Relatively small sample size, but that's his longest run of the first quarter. Bounced it out to the outside to make it successful. And to get there, you actually need some help. It's not just your pure speed getting to the corner, making sure that the blocking is taken care of inside so the pursuit doesn't get you. And oftentimes, those wide receivers, tight ends that might be flexed out, they've got to control the edge and make sure no one from the outside can spill the play before he gets there. down and finding the tight end Hooper and he'll get up to the 43 yard line a good pick up there eight yards on the first down completion seeing that play and understand just how tough it is to cover tight ends especially the ones running around the NFL nowadays makes me glad I didn't make it in that league I would have had a really difficult time but now you get to sit up here with me yeah and that's fun isn't it <laughs> and what a really nice game right there on first down for them brings up a nice second down for them Off the play fake to Freeman. It's Ryan. He's going to wind up and air it out. So the long attempt falls innocently to the ground, and it brings up third. And close there. He caught it, just wasn't able to stay in bounds. And that's where the sideline it was used as a 12th defender. You know, 11's legal. This one is an imaginary one, one that my college coach used to call Sammy Sideline. <laughs> Sammy Sideline can protect you at times, and in this case, that's exactly what he did for the defenders. On third down, Devontae Freeman. And the athleticism on the spin move allows him to pick up the first before he's brought down. It's a gain of four there, and it gives him a new set of downs. And they really needed to get something going, didn't they? They had punted on the last two possessions. The running game starting to come to the front for them, providing a nice pickup there to keep this drive going. down carry and able to push his way forward here for a good little game it's a six yard pickup and it gets him to second and four he had a ton of success here so far but you get the feeling that he might be on the verge of popping one yeah even on that one there was a little bit of a hole but it closed there quickly at the end Former Indiana Hoosier here, Tevin Coleman. And the stop here will come at the 38-yard line. It's a nine-yard gain, and it keeps the drive moving. I think they like this drive a little bit better there, partner. Running game helping out, picking up some of the slack. Because remember, the last drive, they went three and out. Offense comes to the line now, first and ten. They run the play fake to Coleman. Now Ryan. Getting it out left side to Sanu. And he gets this one all the way down inside the 15. A really nice gain of 25 yards. So after that big play, let's see if they can catch their defense maybe on their heels. This is Freeman on first and 10. 
And he'll take it into the end zone. Touchdown, Atlanta. Devontae Freeman, 14 yards. And the Falcons have taken the early lead. Well, Devontae Freeman scored the first points of Super Bowl 51, and he's got the first points here as he's in for six. And I don't want to be snarky here. It's going to come off that way a little bit, but that didn't work out so well for them in Super Bowl 51 against New England when he scored the first touchdown in that game. But I like what they've started with here. Now, here's the thing about Freeman. I love his game can run it inside, can get to the perimeter, can catch the football, pass protects, has an incredible passion for the game. So an eight-play drive covering 80 yards, and it ends in a touchdown run from Devontae Freeman. Here's Bosher to kick it away. This is taken about seven yards deep. And he will be taken down here as the first quarter of play will come to an end. So we played one quarter here on a Monday night. 7-0 is our score. And we're back to Philadelphia after this. The NFL on EA Sports is presented by Snickers. You're not you when you're hungry. Snickers satisfies. Back here with Charles Davis, I'm Brandon Gordon. We've had the kickoff to begin the first quarter. Now it's time for the second quarter kickoff. They've got it first and 10 inside their own 20-yard line. Take this up only to about his 18-yard line. Two yards on the pickup there. It'll be second and eight. Well, he's looking for some running room, and there wasn't a whole lot of it there on that play. I think he was lucky to get a couple yards out of it. So those defenders, they were rallying to the football pretty quickly. Stay on the ground. Again, it's a Jai. It's a 10-yard pickup, and it moves the chains. Tremendous blocking by the interior of the offensive line. They didn't just gash him there. They blasted a gaping hole for him to gallop through. And if he comes back to the huddle, he better be giving them a whole lot of credit and thanking them for that much space to rumble. He was trying to get it to Zach Ertz that time. And that'll bring up second down. Well, hey, with this window, two teams that we've been talking about this year that really deserve discussion and more discussion as we continue to go. How about the Rams and the Jags and the turnarounds that they've had this year? They have been dramatic. They've been dominating at times when you look at how they've played. I mean, we just saw the Rams was in week 15. Went to Seattle and decimated the Seahawks to really take over the NFC West. The Jaguars are steadily getting better throughout the season. I mean, in preseason, the Rams weren't thought of as a team that would make this dramatic a turnaround. Jaguars, they were kind of that trendy, could they be, but they have been for a number of years. This has been something else, and my hat is off to both of these organizations. Three, 
They go play action here on first down. And no escaping this time as he'll go down. They got him for a sack. Dontari Poe coming up the middle, gets him there for a loss of about nine. And plays like that really hurt play calling. They had a really nice gain on the previous play, but gave about half the yardage back on the sack. Excellent pressure up front. Nowhere to go with the football. Down he goes. up to about the 40. A pickup of seven there, but they'll still have 12 yards to go on third down. And that looked like some pretty easy yardage there right up the gut. And he's a guy that has some height to him, so when you don't have to drop a shoulder or create or get through contact or trash, it makes it a lot easier to stay upright, see the field, and make a run as we just saw there. The Eagles on third down. They've been okay. Two for three thus far. This is third down and 12. They'll look to throw. Throwing right, and that's complete. And he'll be brought down just shy of midfield at the 49-yard line. They do get nine, but it leads to fourth down. They didn't get the first down, but I have to say I do like the call. I like what they were trying to do. Try and hit your receiver on the run and see if he can pick it up, keep it on his feet, get a little rack yardage. Yeah, but a nice job defensively to get to him and keep him short of the first. Here's Donnie Jones now as he's on to punt for Philadelphia. He gets us away. It's a good one. Drawing toward the sidelines. And this will depend on the spot as it sails out of bounds. And they'll say it sailed out at the 10-yard line. Heading back onto the field. Here's a look at Devontae Freeman now. So he'll be looking to get in the end zone again. Had the touchdown, as you see, last drive on four carries. And during the break, we were looking at some of the replays from the previous drive. Really good holes created, great space. Yeah, I like the observation you had, though, during that break about, okay, they've got to do something to slow down their runners. So is it bringing in more defensive linemen? Is it dropping in extra linebackers? What are you going to do? Personally, I'm going to take my safety and drop him into the box. I'm going to have at least seven in there until he shows that he can beat me through the air. Yeah. I've got to slow down the running game. I was just going to say, you'll take the exposure in the passing game over the top until you can prove that you can stop the running game. And he's going to be taken down, sacked back at the two. Brandon Graham in there to bring him down for a loss of seven. Well, if an offense is going to throw the ball in this part of the field, any pass rusher will tell you that's his favorite part. Gets a chance to get after the quarterback. It's almost like a reverse red zone. They can create points using their defense, and this time they take their man down. On second down, Freeman. And he's going to lose yardage back to his own one-yard line. They'll wind up losing three. And now it's third down. They've got to do a better job up front and create some space because they're right there, almost literally, on their own goal line. Just a couple of feet away from a safety. That could have been disastrous. Need something from deep in the bag of tricks here after first and second down went backwards. It's third and very long. Coleman now. And he's going to be taken down shy of the five-yard line. Give him three yards there as that'll take us to fourth down. We often talk of situational football. Let's just call it team football. The defense did their job, got off the field, brought the punting situation, so they're turning the ball back over to their offense. You think those guys would get along very well right now? Of course they will. Defense helped the offense. Now it's their turn to take it downfield. Here's Matt Bosher now. As the drive goes backwards, so he's on to punt it away. So a short drop, but he's able to get it out, and this is a good kick. 
Returnable here from the 38. 12 yards on the return that time. And the offense will take over with a new set of downs. Back out for another drive comes LeGarrette Blunt. Now, I'm not going to say you completely abandoned the passing game, but it would really behoove them to get this running game going more. That's the identity most teams are seeking. Able to establish themselves, control the game by running it, have to touch it multiple times in order to have success in this game. Yeah, as we say, yeah, that's right. As we say all the time, that sets up the passing game. I feel like a broken record with that. Listen, we can be broken records all we want. Bottom line is, lather up that big horse <laughs> and let him run. They'll start out on the ground with a Johnny. And he's brought down. They pick up 12 on the play there, and they move the chains. I absolutely love the run right there. This guy's known for his quickness, but also for his speed. And he's able to get to the second level almost before you blink if you give him any type of blocking. Always talk about slot receivers. And they're usually known as quicker than fast. In this case, we've got a guy who's quick and fast, and he used it to great advantage. Here's a play fake as they set up to throw. And brought down, but not before they're inside the 25. 17 yards is the pick up there for number 17. One thing I can say pretty safely, that route is not called if you don't have a guy who can throw the ball and put some mustard on it. Because if you're going to lollipop it in the middle of the field, bad things usually happen. It takes a strong-armed guy who can rifle it in there, and they were able to successfully complete that one. is Ajayi. They find some open field here. And down inside the 15, shy of the 10. 10 more there and another first down. And that run was what a lot of people call an explosive run. Gave them good yardage, solid yardage. They feel good about the whole thing. And they did it behind a two tight end set. It's always interesting to watch what offenses want to do with the two tight ends. Sometimes they line them up together for a power set. Sometimes they put one on each side of the line of scrimmage to balance things out. No matter what, though, when you see two tight ends on the field, your first thought is to think run. In this case, the offense was able to run successfully. On first down, he'll drop to throw. And incomplete. LeGarrette Blunt was the intended target. And it's second down. I tell you, Brandon, this defense is playing with some confidence. They haven't allowed a point yet. Flying to the football. I'm telling you, it's almost 11 to the ball on every snap. Another nice job there to force an incompletion. Second down here after the incomplete pass. Back to throw here. Oh, he dropped it. They were looking for him in the middle third. He couldn't catch it. Now third down. Slants are so tough to cover because everything happens so fast. But sometimes it happens too fast for the guy catching the ball because all of his movements have to be quick off the line of scrimmage, and then all of a sudden the ball's right on top of you. And maybe he got a little bit ahead of himself there. Yeah, a lot of times coming in with good pace, and he dropped it. Eagles on third down. They've hit two for four thus far. This is third and ten. Back to throw. Out to the flat. That's complete to his running back. And here he'll get it down to the seven. It'll be a gain of four. And it'll be fourth down. So much about this game is just understanding situations and then having to execute, isn't it? Guard the first down sticks. Don't let them get there. And they've rallied and made the tackle. Now Jake Elliott for the field goal try. From the right hash, and this one just a chippy. And the kick by Elliott is good. And they are on the board, but still trailing. It's seven to three. So the drive takes him inside the 10, but it ends with just three. And a nice job defensively to rise up and make sure they didn't get in.
After the field goal, here's Elliott to kick it away. This is taken about seven yards deep. And in hindsight, probably should have stayed where he was as he'll only get back to the 16-yard line. Getting set to go again on offense, we get a peek at Julio Jones now. Second quarter, a guy like him, no catches, so that's the surprising part, but they're winning, so maybe they've been able to do some other things effectively, I guess. And they found other ways, haven't they? Because the receivers will tell you, offense needs to run through us, but they're managing to get it done in this ball game without having to actually do that. I wouldn't expect them to stay silent for the rest of the game, though. Yeah, yeah you got to think that his first catch is coming at some point. Now Ryan on first down. Looking downfield for Jones. And that is caught on the right sideline, but out of bounds, says the line judge. The throw took him a little too far. It's second down. I know exactly why he tried to throw the ball to Julio Jones there. He's never considered covered. He's either too fast or too strong. You always try and get it to him. Especially on those deep passes. A fake to Freeman. Now it's Ryan. And this one complete to Levine Toilolo. And a nice gain of 21 yards. There are so many things to watch for when you play defense. And reading your keys, you always hear about that, and having your eyes in the right place. Sometimes your eyes can fool you. How about that play action there? And it sprang the big guy, didn't it? Able to dump it over the top to him. And now a 10th carry for Freeman. And he'll get it out a couple yards shy of midfield at the 48. That one good for 10 yards. And that'll bring up a second in just about a few inches here. That was a good strong run there. While it won't pick up a first down, it was definitely something needed by that offense. A positive run. They got a good push by their guys up front. Maybe it's something they can build on as this game continues. Phase of perfection is something we all chase, whether it's playing this game or whatever we do. Hard to attain, but that's what they were searching for as that pass goes incomplete. The offense on third down tonight, they've only converted once in four tries. They're looking at third and a few inches. Ryan on the handoff, it's Freeman. And he gets this one across midfield for the first down to the 46. It's a seven-yard gain there, and it's good enough to move the chains. Just about every coach we talk to says the crowd shouldn't affect us. That shouldn't be an issue. And then the next breath, they talk about taking the crowd and taking them out of the game by picking up first downs and keeping them at bay. I think we just saw an example of that there, didn't we? Important to do, especially early in the game like they have. Again, they'll run with Freeman. And he's going to be met at about the 43. Give him three on first down. It'll set up a second and seven. Not much happening there on first down. I thought there might have been a hole for a split second. Yeah, but it dried up pretty quickly, didn't it? Closed fast. They go play action with Ryan. And that is incomplete. Sometimes the coverage is so good, no matter what you're doing on offense, you just can't shake anyone free. They try their best to find someone open, but 
They took away every passing alley, every angle, and shut the play down. The Falcons on third down. Two for five to this point. This is third and seven. From the shotgun, Ryan. And he couldn't hang on to it through the contact. Incomplete. That's a first down if he holds on, but you saw the contact. Able to jar it free from him and force a fourth down. Great play defensively there, as you said, just to knock it free, because if he had caught that, pass the sticks, first down. Here's Matt Bosher now. He's been terrific so far. He gets this one away, and boy, it's another boomer. And they'll play keep away from the returner as this one will be marked out of bounds at the 13-yard line. Pretty good spot. The Eagles offense now gets set to head back onto the field. And last time they got three points, but it was a chip shot field goal. And when you go to the sideline after a chip shot field goal, maybe the offense not too happy. It's a balancing act, isn't it? Because you're exactly right. They're none too pleased that they didn't punch it in for six points. But they also have to remember, they did put points on yeah, the board. Three points and, is three points. And in this league, <laughs> you take points when you can get them. Not easily done. There's a handoff to Ajayi to begin the drive. Oh, the spin. And a nice gain there as he'll be taken down just shy of the 20. He'll get a nice chunk there on the first down run, and it's second and four. Two minutes to play here in the first half. We'll come back to Philadelphia after this. We're just two minutes away from sending you to Orlando for Larry Ridley in our EA Sports Halftime Report, so don't forget about that coming up shortly. Yeah, it wouldn't be a halftime without him, and we thank him for doing the highlights. Let's go get a snack. And after the play on the ground, that brings up second down here. Now a shotgun snap as they'll look to throw. And that's incomplete. Well, one thing that I've liked defensively is that they've shown them a lot of different looks here in the first half. They've come after them. They've sat back. I think that's what you need to do to keep an offense guessing. And they certainly have kept them on their toes. That's why they haven't had much success on the scoreboard. The Eagles on third down. Two for five to this point. This is third and four. Hey. He'll look to throw. And Jeffrey's got it. And he picks up the first before he's taken down at the 29. A nice pick up there, 10 yards, and it'll move the sticks. They'll look to throw here on first down. And that's complete to Jeffrey. And they get him down, but not before he takes it across the 40-yard line. Back-to-back -back nice plays, 12 yards that time, and a first down. Now Foles. And he'll toss this one incomplete. Seeing no options, he throws it away. Well, that incompletion there gives us a chance to inform the Madden community that we are taking a little bit of a break for the holidays. A brief hiatus. A brief hiatus. And the next live content update, next commentary update will be coming January 10th. Well, that just means if we're coming back for January 10th, we're talking playoffs. We all we will be talking okay, so playoffs. We'll be talking playoffs. We'll be talking the meat of the action, the best part of the season, the gift that keeps on giving. All right, so the post-Christmas blues will be over because we'll be talking about the playoffs. Four yards on the completion, and it sets up a third down. Well, that was an okay hookup there with his tight end, but unfortunately, they didn't get the kind of yards they had hoped for. That's going to bring up third down. And for the Falcons, five men in the secondary, now on third. False start there. That will set the offense back five yards. Brandon, the lineman, certainly flinched there before the snap. A good call. 
So that'll back him up five. Still third down. The Eagles on third down. They've hit at 50%, three of six to this point. This is third and 11. They'll drop to throw. Looking middle, and that's complete. And he has the first down yardage before they bring him down right at the 45. There's Foles. He's going to flip one out here to his running back. And he'll get it inside the 40 to the 39. The Eagles going to take the first of their timeouts as the stoppage will come with a little under a minute to go in this first half. And welcome back, the offensive unit. They took the timeout, and now they get set to line up as we resume action. Offense staying ahead of the chains here, second and three. Foles. They dump off underneath to Ajayi. And now before this first down play, we're going to get a timeout here. As they get the stoppage with a little over 50 seconds to go in the first half. So the offense takes the timeout, and they are back out and ready to rock. Set up to throw. Drops it off to Ajayi. And he'll get this one down to about the 20-yard line. Give him 12 yards on that one. It earns him a fresh set of downs. We always talk about having to read defenses and how complicated that is. Well, this was an excellent read. Read the pressure and got rid of the football before it even got to him for a nice game. And when they're blitzing like that, running back usually a good spot to go with a football? Without a doubt, because he's right in your sight line or he's near you. So you're able to just get it to him easily. And once he gets in space, that's usually a good matchup for him. From the red zone now, they'll look to throw. Throwing for his running back, and he's got him complete. Now before the second down play, we'll get whistles and a timeout as they'll stop it with 13 seconds to play in half number one. And we are back here. I'm Brandon Gunn alongside Charles Davis. So the offense takes the timeout. And now we're set to get going. Just one yard to go here on second down. They'll set up a throw. And that's incomplete. Clock stops with 10 seconds left. He was trying to get it to Jay Ajayi there out of the backfield. And it's third and short. I know our vantage point might be a little bit better way up here. But that looked like an ill-advised throw to me. I didn't see anything open. And this play just didn't look right from the beginning. It did not. I thought he might get outside and just chuck it away. Dangerous pass, incomplete. He'll drop 
to throw. And almost intercepted. Would have been a huge pick in the end zone, but as it stands, that brings up fourth. These guys had to settle for a field goal their last time moving the ball down the field. They may have to do it again on this drive. That could be frustrating. Yeah, I don't want to be cliche, but at least they were able to get three last time. Three here, not the worst thing in the world. So they won't get a touchdown, but here's a chance to at least get three to end the first half. And Elliott puts this one through. And they'll get it back within a point at 7-6. to six. So a field goal here, they're still down, but they put a dent into that lead before the break. And that's got to feel good, because now they've seen that they can put some more points on the board, and that gives them a whole second half to get back to where they want to be, and that's in the lead. After the field goal, here's Elliott to kick it away. And this will be a touchback as that sails over the end line. down they go down to a knee so we have reached halftime now with the visiting Falcons out on top as we'll send you down the coast to Orlando where we check in with our friend Larry Ridley and the EA Sports halftime report Larry all right Brandon we'll see if I can get through this without being skipped as we welcome you to our EA Sports halftime report the Eagles are behind right now but the home crowd should give them a boost the Falcons have come in and look good as the road team and we'll just keep trying to play hard and maintain the lead going forward. So let's take a look at some of the highlights from the first half. Eagles have possession early in the first. Completion is made across the middle of the field, and he'll end up at the 40-yard line before being tackled. Eagles would later fumble and turn the ball over. First and 10, Claiborne's able to zero in on the QB here. This ends up as a huge loss in yardage. Now first and 10, Freeman's gonna head outside to the right, and he'll go in from 14 yards out. He'll take the early advantage. All right, thank you, Larry. Plenty of intrigue to come. A one-point game as we get set for half two. Both teams appear ready for the fight ahead, and we resume action here in quarter number three. And they will not get a chance to return this one as it's through the end zone for a touchback. Out come the Eagles now as they'll go on offense first here in the third quarter. They're close, close game, but they're going to need to do a little bit better probably here in half two, no? I would agree with that totally. I would guess it in the locker room. They talked about cleaning up some of the errors. But overall, I think they wanted to be positive with them. Guys, we're right there. Just not playing as well as we need to. Let's pick it up 
and we still have a chance to win this game. Yeah, they do. We'll see if they can pick it up. They'll run it now out of the gun. And they're able to get this one across the 35. 12 yards there as they move the chains. The more football I watch, the more I want to check and see if teams are going to panic when they're down on the scoreboard. And this team has shown no signs of doing that. A lot of the time, they come out after the half. Things haven't worked so well in the first go around. They want to throw the football like crazy. But the way to open up throwing the ball is to run it. And they've run it well here to start the second half. Now a play fake here on first down. Pressure brought in, and the Falcons get there for the sack. Dontari Poe in there to get him for his second sack of the night. Well, they go play fake. The problem is nobody was faked out. <laughs> and when no one's faked out, what's the end result? Sack. Quarterback gets hit. <laughs> the intended receiver and it'll bring up third down and Charles got to like what this defense has been able to do these last couple of plays yeah they get the sack on first down then they force the incomplete pass now they're just a play away from getting the football right back but it's a big play they've got to hold up the Eagles on third down they're at 50 percent four for eight this will be a tough third and 18. they'll look to throw here Finding a safety valve here. That's complete. <laughs> a big hit. Knocked down sideways. It's a gain of six on the play, and that's going to bring up a fourth down. Everyone's got to be able to catch the football. Doesn't matter what position you play, but if you're on offense, be aware. Ball may come your way. Here's Donnie Jones now as he's on to punt for Philadelphia. And he'll get this away into the icy winter air. So possession goes over here on the punt. And the Falcons will get it first and ten from deep in their own territory. So we get set to start this third quarter. Here's the Falcons offense now. They were able to get the ball back here. Didn't surrender any points. Now they'll look to add to that lead. Hey, how about the boost the defense gave them? Going right out on the field, shutting them down, not giving up any points, and turning the ball back over. They want to do their part now and show them a little respect and some <laughs> gratitude by scoring some points. And to get a little more cushion. Play fake to Freeman. It's Ryan. And this one is incomplete. The Pro Bowl wideout Julio Jones is intended receiver. And now it's second down. Well, speaking of incomplete passes, we had a very controversial incomplete pass in Week 15 in that Steelers-Patriots game, did we not? In the city of Pittsburgh, it wasn't incomplete. Right, okay. yeah. For them, it's, it's tough. They won. If they you're won, a Steelers right? fan, that was not an incomplete pass. That was a touchdown. But by letter of the law, having to catch a football as a, as a receiver is going to the ground, he has to survive the ground, holding on to the football firmly. But letter of the law, it wasn't a catch. Right. The problem is, you put 100 people in a room, it looks like a catch. Right. So then the question going forward is, does that rule need to be changed? Well, the competition committee tried to define it clearly two years ago. I think they'll be back here this spring once again trying to clearly define what is a catch because right now a lot of people are confused. Looks like the defense in press coverage here. Now Ryan going to give it to Freeman. A nice run there, nine yards, and it'll be second down. Some runs are blocked so well, 
you almost forget that someone has to carry the ball to gain the yardage. The leverage by the offensive line to create space up front, really well done. Second down, they need less than a yard to pick up the first. Now a handoff, it's Freeman. The gain of four that time as the drive continues. They're trying to show that they can run the ball and protect this lead. Give it to the backs, play a little bit of keep away, don't you think? And that's probably a good philosophy at this point, going to make that defense stand up and stop them. So the run moves the chains, and here we go on first down. They go play action here on first down. He's going to sling this deep downfield, and that's going to wind up incomplete. However, we do have a flag down. Let's check in with our referee. Trying to disrupt Julio Jones there, the intended target. A little too close, got the flag thrown. I'm not sure anyone can cover Julio Jones one-on-one -on -one for very long without getting their share of pass interference calls. His size, his speed, his physicality makes it almost impossible to do. So after that big gain, let's see what else the offense has up its sleeve. Now contact up front as penalty markers come in. Who is this against? Neutral zone fraction, defense. So five yards there as one of the big guys up front moved. And in a 4-3 front, you got the two defensive tackles right near the football. I know there's a lot of movement around there, but they're always taught to have one eye on the football. Apparently, that didn't happen. penalty here's Freeman great move but still wrangled before reaching the 20 it's a gain of three and it sets him up with second and just two yards to go not a whole lot there after the penalty but remember it was first and five not first and ten so now they can keep grinding out first downs and good things can happen for them just second and short coming up offense in a good spot here second and two Now they'll throw it with Ryan. Throwing over the middle, but it's incomplete. He was trying to hit Taylor Gabriel that time. And it's third and short. But pretty good coverage there in both of these defenses. They've had good coverage throughout this one. No doubt about it. And in today's NFL, where we're used to a bit more scoring, this feels almost like a well-pitched game in baseball on both sides where the tension continues to build. Who's going to make the big play? On third down, it's Freeman. And he's going to have a first down here as he gets this one to the 17-yard line. Only three there on the pickup, but that's enough to move the chains. Well, someone's been having a good game so far, and you know something? Lob has been power running. They decided to turn him loose again on third down, didn't they? They did indeed. He delivered the tough yards. And a new set of downs here after picking up the first on the ground. From the red zone now, here's Ryan on first down. It's hauled in by Hardy. Just a yard on the catch there. It'll be second and nine. Ready now for second and nine. Hey, hey, cut in, cut in. 
Another carry for the workhorse tonight. Freeman. One yard, the official pickup there, so it's going to set up third and nine. Well, so many times we look at a short run and we praise the offense for trying to set the tempo and establish things, but the defensive guys, hey, they just won the battle there. It wasn't a big run given up. They don't always have to absorb the body blows. Sometimes they dish them out themselves. On third down, Ryan. This is caught. And he will have the first down before he's brought down at the three. They're able to convert on third down, and that sets up a first and goal. I don't care how many times we see it, I still get a kick out of watching quarterbacks and receivers do the pass tree in pregame warm-up. But I always remember that when we go to practices, we see that after practices as well. They really tune it up, don't they? They tune it up. They know why they do it for these situations. First down. And they build that trust, and that's why they're able to find him in this type of a situation. They'll look to run with Freeman. And he'll go backwards, losing yardage to the five. That's going to go as a loss of a yard, and it'll be second down. Yeah, that was a safety that came through and made the play, but there's no doubt in my mind, he hits like a linebacker. And we see a lot of that in today's NFL, don't we? And that time, we do indeed a big hit for a loss. Ooh, long drive. The defense just cannot seem to catch a break and get off the field. So they're on the five-yard line here, second down and goal. That is not going to be any help as they dump him behind the line of scrimmage. He lost two there, and it's third down. Defensively, I think they can smell a stop ball right around the five here, brings up third. And I think what they've done is they put doubt in the minds of the offensive guys. What do we do? Because now you don't have a go-to play. Either side they pick, throwing it, running it, it won't be easy. They've been stuffed twice here for losses. Now it's third and goal. From the gun, it's Ryan. Touchdown, Falcons! Bryant now to tack on the extra point. And it's up. It's good. Our score, 14 to 6. So that drive spans 13 plays. And it's capped off by a touchdown run of six yards. Here's Bosher to kick it away. This is taken about seven yards deep. And in hindsight, probably should have stayed where he was as he'll only get back to the 16-yard line. Here's the Philadelphia offensive unit now as they head out to take over possession. And hoping to do better than they did their last possession when they punted the football. Appeal to the vanity of your offensive line. Tell them that they control your fate. Leverage guys. Win the line of scrimmage. If you do that, you start to win first down. You win second down. And guess what? You start accumulating first downs. And that's what they need in order to not pump the ball again. The 
They'll come out throwing here to start the drive. And it pops free. The collision there jarred the ball loose and brings up second down. Well, we got a second here. And thinking back to week 15, a cool moment in that Panthers-Green Bay game. Did you, uh, did you see the video of Cam Newton and Clay Matthews? I did. And, you know, when you watch it, when you watch it, and, you know, what everybody told me, when they were watching it live, you could see something happening because the commentators were talking at that time. Then they took the commentators' voices out, and you caught everything. So let me see if I have it right. Cam Newton, quarterback for the Panthers, had some by play with linebacker Clay Matthews of Green Bay. And Clay was telling him he knew what he was about yeah. to call, right? Yeah, Clay was saying, well, yeah, guys, watch for the wheel route. And Cam said, oh, that's cool. You've been watching film? Well, watch this. And he switched the play and threw a slant to McCaffrey for a touchdown. How great is that? The back and <laughs> forth. So Clay Matthews did his homework, yep. but they changed it up, right? Because it looked like a wheel, and yep. he turned it into a slant. That's an excellent counter play by the Carolina Panthers. What a cool moment. Cam Newton and Clay Matthews. Now back to throw. Caught right side, it's Jeffrey. And he's going to have the first down yardage to the 35. They pick up 12 on the play there, and they move the chains. But we're used to seeing the guy that you consider the number one receiver double covered, but how about this guy? He's double covered and finds a way to make the play for a first down. That's how you increase your Madden rating, right? No doubt about that at all. And you know something? I think we'll hear about that from him soon. And the offense lining up first and ten. They'll run it now out of the gun. And he'll get this one up to about the 39 here. Yeah, give him four yards there. It'll be second and six. Not a run that you're going to write home about, but still a good first down run. That's what an offense calls staying on schedule. Three to four yards on first down. You're set up very well for the rest of the drive. Second down following the run. They'll run it now out of the gun. And he will be brought down at about the 43 that time. Three yards is half of what they needed. Now can they get the other three here on third down? The Eagles on third down. They've hit on half of them. Five for ten. Here it's third and three. They're going to look to throw. Aguilar has it. And he will have the first down as he's brought down up near midfield. Call it a gain is seven, and it gets him a new set of downs. But give the defensive guys a little bit of credit. They didn't let the deep ball beat them on that play, did they? No, the, the drag. That guy can be your safety valve. We saw it right there. Yeah, and it picked up a first down for him, too. So the offense has it first and 10. Here's a play fake as they set up to throw. And he can't quite bring it in. Might have heard footsteps there across the middle. Second down. Well, hey, in the spirit of the holidays, let's have some fun. You sent out something on social media last week I thought was great. You asked it, if Santa Claus was in the NFL, what position would he be playing? Well, we got some great responses, yeah, too, on that one. What was I mean, the theme? A lot, of people, a lot of people looked at him as a defender, zero technique, which would be a nose guard, right, because of his bowl. Some people thought he'd be a great three technique. Somebody said, well, his footwork would be terrific. Santa's quicker than you think. And then some people had him on offense, but there were a few skeptics out there as well said, well, he can't really play he gets carried around all the time by Rudolph and the rest of the crew and, and I mean you just name it they had it but it was a whole lot of fun to hear the responses on Santa and some people even took it to enough Santa went to the combine would he try would he go every drill would he do all these things and I was like you know this has actually been a whole lot of fun and bottom line is for me Santa can play whatever position he wants Santa's my quarterback no doubt no question the Eagles on third down. They've converted six times and could use a seventh here. This is third and nine. From the midfield stripe, they'll look to throw. And this is going to be incomplete.
Here's Donnie Jones now. He'll boot it away from about his 35. And he gets it away, a directional kick going toward the sideline. And this one will not be returnable as it sails out of bounds. Now the Falcons offense, they get ready to head back out here. And they're hoping to redo their efforts of the last drive when they got into the end zone. And just think of what it's like now on the sideline. Because when you score a touchdown, you have to go over and look at the tablet and see what you did on the last drive. When you score points, it's a whole lot better view than when you're trying to figure out how to fix things there. and 10 it's Ryan and Jones has it over the middle and they're able to get this one across the 35 a good gain of 14 there and it moves the chains that was a nicely run slant route and what the receiver's trying to do is make the defender think he's going upfield for a deeper route and then breaks it off usually after about three to four steps and cuts towards the middle of the field and now what he's trying to do is use his body to keep the defender away from the football and give the quarterback a really nice target. Final minute now of the third quarter. Now Ryan on first down. And the throw left sideline here is caught, but they'll rule it incomplete. Couldn't keep his feet in. Second down. Austin Hooper, the tight end, was the intended target. And that'll bring up second down. So that pass goes awry, but to make a quick pivot before the game, you and I were going through the list of 1,000-yard receivers this year. Some familiar names, yes, but a couple that are back on the list and then a fresh face. Yeah, you're exactly right. Now, you, men you mentioned guys that we're used to. Antonio Brown, well over 1,000 yards again. No surprise there. Brock, he gets it done. You know, you, let's face it, he's one of the toughest matchups in the league. But Michael Thomas with the New Orleans Saints, really nice rookie season 2016. He made it legit this year, going over 1,000 yards. And then you look at Keenan Allen and DeAndre Hopkins. Welcome back to the 1,000-yard yeah. list for both of them because you expect them to be there each and every year. And finally, they'll welcome to the club <laughs> an Adam undrafted Thielen. free agent from Minnesota State named Adam Thielen. You're exactly right. What a season he's had for the Minnesota Vikings. One quarter remains here as we wrap up the week on a Monday night. We'll return with more after this break. You're watching the NFL on EA Sports. And welcome back. We are in the city of brotherly love, Philadelphia. It's the Falcons. They've got the football. They've got the lead as we get set to start the fourth. The Falcons on third down. Five out of nine thus far. This is third down and 12. From the shotgun, Ryan. He's going to let this one go deep. And it's caught on the sideline, but he's not going to have a first down. They say he was out of bounds. So a big call there. That brings up fourth. Well, they haven't had a whole lot of success in the passing game here. Now, in the second half, he's thinking, I guess maybe just take a shot deep. I think you're right. Almost looking for a bailout, isn't he? Can my receiver go up and make a big play for me? Can I create a penalty downfield, maybe pick up an interference call and get that yardage downfield? Anything trying to get going again, but you're right. He definitely took a shot. And a nice job here to down this one right on the five-yard line. Hey, 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 
Philadelphia getting sent to take the field. These guys had to punt their last possession, and that's become too familiar of a refrain. Too many of these drives just wound up going nowhere. But you know how in baseball, when the pitcher gets a base hit and he's on base, they bring his jacket out to him to keep him warm? A lot of times, the punter goes to the sideline and puts on sweatpants or a wrap over his leg to keep it warm. He might need a massage from the trainer right now <laughs> from all the work he's getting. And tough starting field position here. Now Foles. He finds Aguilar over the middle. And they finally are able to take him down at the opposite 47. A big play there for Philly. 48 yards. A nice job there, Charles. They picked up the blitz, were able to complete the pass. That had the total feel of a quarterback in control. Red blitz, got him into the right protection scheme, so he doesn't get hit back there. He's got a chance to step up with supreme confidence and deliver it downfield for a nice completion. Fresh set of downs here. Here's Foles. Looking middle, and it's incomplete. Nelson Aguilar, the intended receiver. That'll bring up second down. Well, they're slinging it, and then there's one you got to put a timer on, huh? I mean, that one came in hot. That yeah, came in hot, but overthrown out of his reach and incomplete. So incomplete on first. Let's see what second down has in store. time he's able to take it down to the 42 that catch good for five it's third down well clearly one of his advantages as a passer is his height sit back in the pocket fired over the middle that makes things tougher defensively doesn't it it really does because your goal is to move the quarterback off his initial spot when he gets his drop back completed but when you have that type of height he can stay in there if he's willing to take the hits and just fire over the top, which saves him time and actually completes a play a little bit quicker than it normally does for a quarterback has to slide and find open space to throw. And he gets it to the 32, good enough for a first down. We'll give him 10 yards on that one, and that'll earn him a fresh set of downs. Well, they've had a great, impressive drive going here, and that pickup ensures the drive continues. And not only do you continue the drive, which is demoralizing for the guys on the defense side of the ball right now, but you make your own defense happy. They're able to get a little more rest over on the sidelines while this one continues downfield. They'll set up to throw. Drops it on to Ajayi. Six yards on the pickup, and that'll make it second down. And that's one of his advantages of a passer, is it not? With his height, setting back there in the pocket, firing it over the middle, he can really see everything clearly. It is, and I know that other quarterbacks get it done different ways, all right? You don't have to be his height to make a great play, but what he does is he takes away having to make those slide steps in the pocket to find angles to throw the ball through. He just goes right over the top of it because he can see everything, and sometimes that saves time and gets the ball to a receiver quicker. It's an eight-yard pickup and leads to a new set of downs. But it appears that they read man defense and went to the out route, and what you have to do on that one is the receiver's got to make sure he works a defender towards the middle of the field to give himself space to cut to the outside and have that ball delivered with good timing, and they got it done. And the defense with their backs against the wall a little bit here as the offense is in the red zone. Inside the red zone here. They'll look to throw. And he finds his tight end. It's Ertz. And he's able to work it here to the eight-yard line. Give him nine there on the first down completion. Nice rhythm throw there on first down. He located his tight end, made it a nice, easy pitch and catch. Hoping he can break a tackle or two. Wasn't able to do that there, but still good yardage. Here's a Jay. And the 
second wave of tacklers is going to get him as they stop him behind the line. It's a loss of four. Now third down. We all have habits. We can be somewhat predictable, and you know me pretty well on second down and short. What I like to say. Play action. Yeah, without a doubt. I thought that was a great spot to call it. Instead, didn't go their way, did it? No, defense sold out for the run. Worked out well. And on third and five, this will be the eighth play of the drive. They'll set up a throw. And incomplete. The contact made the ball roam free and brings up fourth down. I think that's a good job there defensively. They did allow them to drive all the way downfield, but once they got their backs to the goal line, they really turned up the pressure. Yeah, they let them get all the way down here. Now the field shrinks. They've struggled to convert, and that last incompletion brings up fourth. As expected, they're going for it to keep the drive alive. This will be caught at about the six. And he won't have the touchdown, but he will have the first down as he's tackled at the two. The decision to go for it pays off, and now they're set up first and goal. Fourth down trailing in the fourth quarter. They felt compelled to go for it, and they got it. Well, I'd look down at my play sheet, and what I would find, plays that have been successful throughout the game that have worked at the distance you need, and that's exactly what they got done. Just play after play after play on this long drive for the offense. They'll go to Blunt, try and pound it in. And this will result in him losing yardage. Back to the three. It's a loss of a yard there, and now second down. Well, it's been the air game that's taken them down on this drive before they finally turned around and handed it off on the last play. And now they're looking for the big boys to get him in the end zone. Couldn't do it there. It'll be interesting to see. Offensive lines had to pass block a lot on this drive. Will they be able to revert and fire out and create some space in the run game? Now flags come in here. Looked like one of the Eagles might have moved. False start, offense. And that'll be accepted, of course, and that moves him back five. And a really long drive here, and it goes on and on. gun they'll look to throw incomplete almost intercepted they haven't picked him off yet would have been a great time for the first but instead it's third down I guess they're in a situation now fourth quarter where they're forced to take some chances but I don't know that that was a type of a chance you want to take and that one could very easily have been intercepted and if it does get picked off that could possibly seal this one An extra DB defensively here. Big stop needed on third and goal. He may be a blitzer. Back to throw. And he's got it. And he'll be brought down here at the three-yard line. A gain of five, but not enough. Leads to a fourth and goal. Well, they certainly didn't get what they wanted on that play. That means it's a big-time decision on what you call on fourth down. Absolutely, because a field goal here doesn't do them much good. Likely the play of the game here, trailing in the final quarter and going for it on fourth and goal. Oh, and now movement and a whistle, and they may have to rethink their plans on fourth down. Offense. And that'll set them back five. So on fourth down, out trots the kicker in a big spot here. From the left hash, a chip shot here. And the kick by Elliott is good. 
good. And that'll get the lead down to five. So an interesting call there to take the three. I guess they're thinking their hands were tied, but in the fourth quarter, that field goal, it really might not help them much at all. Yeah, I mean, you still need a touchdown. Another field goal does you no good, so it'll be interesting to see what the media reaction is if the score stays where it is. After the field goal, here's Elliott to kick it away. That's fielded in the end zone. And in hindsight, probably should have stayed where he was as he'll only get back to the 16-yard line. Atlanta now coming out on the field. And a tight game after punting last time. See if they can get something going on this drive. As they head to the field now, with the game this close, you've got to feel there's a sense of urgency for them going on offense right now. But they have to do it without letting panic creep in and affect their play. They'll throw on first down with Ryan. Oh, incomplete. A turnover would have really helped there. Almost intercepted. Instead, it's just second down. Oh, man, that was close. The opportunity to change momentum. Big play right in his hands. Unable to come down with it. A sigh of relief, no doubt, on offense if that fell harmlessly to the ground. Unable to connect on the first down pass play. Now it's second down. A fake to Freeman. Now it's Ryan. He goes underneath to Freeman. And he's taken down, but not before he gets this across the 25-yard line. Give him 12 yards on that one. It earns him a fresh set of downs. I know most of the time when the ball's in the air, you're thinking wide receiver, tight end. But running backs, they can be a big part of any passing offense nowadays. So here we go, first and ten now. They go play action here on first down. And finding the tight end, Hooper. No gain there on the completion, second and ten. Well, he caught it right at the line of scrimmage, and before he could even think about advancing it forward, he got hit. Great tackling, because that's what you're taught. Don't give up yards after the catch. And most offenses make a living off of yards after catch. Those hidden yards that may not go into the score sheet, but they count big for moving the ball and stretching the field. Really nice open field tackle. Here's Ryan. Looking right sideline, but it's incomplete. He was looking for Mohamed Sanu there. Third down here. Had an open man that time and ended up putting a little too much heat on it, don't you think, partner? Absolutely. Just needed a touch more air under it. Instead, he fired an absolute bullet. The Falcons on third down. They've hit on half of them. Five for ten. This is third and ten. They run the play fake to Coleman. Now Ryan. And that is incomplete. Here's Matt Bosher now, as he'll come on to kick for a sixth time tonight. This is brought in at the 21. 
Good blocking there. Nearly sprung him. As it is, it'll go as a 19-yard return. And the Eagles will have it taking over first and 10. Jay Ajayi works his way back onto the field. And we have seen a decline in the numbers. Where does the fault lie? Just him? Maybe the guys up front combination? Well, as you and I both know, it's almost always a collective deal. But in this case, I think maybe the offensive line got a little overconfident. They had blocked so well in the first half, picked up on what the defense was doing. I think we've seen an adjustment now that they have not picked up on, and now they're being a little bit overwhelmed. They'll come out throwing here on first down. It's caught on the right side at Smith. And he's taken down, but not before he gets this into enemy territory across the 40. Well, that certainly looked like the Torrey Smith we knew in Baltimore. A guy can just run past defenses, and what do they say? Take the top right off of them. Game-changing speed, and the days in Baltimore good, days in San Fran not so great, but now hoping to get back to his former self. I would say they have an extremely motivated wide receiver in Torrey Smith. First down and 10 now for the offensive group. They'll look to throw. He's going to flip that out to the flat. It's complete. And he's going to get this inside the 30. 12 yards there as they move the chains. He's having a big game through the air, and sometimes those smart decisions just dump it off. That's how you continue to have big games through the air. I agree totally. That's, that's a great analogy, a great way to put it, because he doesn't get too greedy where everything has to be pushed downfield, trying to create big plays that aren't there. You dump it off and take that nice game, and things add up, and now you have the kind of game he's having. to throw and he'll go down here right around the 23 yard line call it a three yard game and it'll make it second down Second down now after the pass completion. He'll look to throw. This will be caught inside the 10. And he's going to be taken down here with a penalty flag on the field. So a decent gain, but all for naught on the penalty. It's too bad, isn't it? They were feeling pretty good about it. The only people celebrating, the guys who just gave up that play. One of the bigger plays in the game thus far. The crowd getting into it as we come up on a big third down. They'll look to throw here. And he'll be brought down at the 21, just shy of the 20 in the red zone. Two yards is all they'll get on the completion. It's fourth down. One hallmark of good defenses is understanding the game, understanding positioning, and tackling immediately in the secondary after catches. I think we just saw that on display right there. Got to him before he ever had a chance to think about turning it upfield.
One score down. Here we go. They're going to go for it here on fourth down. Got to try it here. He's back to throw. And that is incomplete. The Eagles unable to convert there on fourth. And the Falcons' defense stands tall. They'll get the football back. So the failure to convert no doubt really hurts. But this one's not over. A good chunk of time on the clock and the timeouts. Yeah, not only do they have the timeouts, as you just noted, they're going to get an extra one with the two-minute warning. And that's going to help them big way. So in a sense, they have four timeouts in their pocket. The big thing, stopping them on defense now. They can't let them get a first down and make them use their timeouts and get a fresh set of downs. They've got to stop them right here. And if so, they've still got an opportunity. So they're leading. They have possession of the football, and certainly this is where they just want to milk the clock. They'll run with Freeman here to begin the drive. And running room scarce here. He's going to be stopped in his tracks at the line of scrimmage. Officially no gain on the play, and it's second down. Time for a break. We'll come back, see what transpires after this. So it's Falcon football as we welcome you back. They've got a second down now as they search for a way to get this one to the finish line. with a minute 56 to go. So a defensive timeout, chance to regather, regroup, and get set as we resume action. The Falcons on third down. They've converted five times in their many chances thus far. This is third and ten. Coleman. And he'll take this one up close to the 25-yard line. And now with 152 to go, we get another pause in the action. A timeout here defensively. So the timeout over and all 11 men back out onto the field for the defense. Here's Matt Bosher now as he's on to punt for Atlanta. <laughs> and now running right through it. A field flipper there, a 47-yard punt coupled with a loss on the return. And that will come the offense as they take over. Nick Foles gearing up again here to go on offense. This is something we've seen many times over the course of his career. Can he pull off another fourth quarter comeback? It's very strange, isn't it? Because when it's a player of this magnitude, even though the guys on defense have the lead and are sitting in the best spot, they're maybe the most nervous people in the stadium because they've seen this happen to too many people before 
too many teams, they've got to find a way to shut him down. Here we go again for the grizzled vet. Back to throw. Now a hit and Foles loses the football. It's out. Unfortunately, uh, he's able to recover himself, but the clock's still rolling here. Clock running, about to hit 90 seconds to go in the game. Back to throw. And that'll be incomplete. So he's unable to complete it there, and just not the game that you would expect from him. He's been off the mark, really, start to finish. Yeah, it makes you wonder what exactly is going on. Is he a little bit dinged up here, or is he just off just by a bit? Maybe he can get it back in this situation. He'll need to. He's back to throw. And, oh, a crusher there as it's intercepted. Picked up by Brian Poole. And he takes this one back into the end zone. And the Falcon defense has a touchdown. That's the story of the game. They've been suffocating all game long on defense. They were suffocating there again in a big way. And they've done it not just by out-athleting them, which is often the case, but by being able to adjust to anything they tried to throw at them and beating them into the punch each and every time. This was a defense that was well-prepared. Here's Bryant for the extra point. And this one gives his guys a 12-point lead. A heck of a play there defensively, getting the interception, navigating his way into the end zone for the touchdown. So they throw the pick six. They'll get another shot at it now as this one's in the air. On the return, it's Kenyon Barner. <laughs> and he'll be taken down just past the 20 at about the 21-yard line. Now Philadelphia ready to get going on offense again. Flags come in here. Looked like one of the Eagles might have moved. So this will be accepted as it moves the offense backwards. And on the outside, they're playing press coverage. Now Foles. And the Falcons get there. The Falcons get the sack. Down he goes. Adrian Claiborne in there to take him down. And the clock will roll. Here's Foles. And his throw here is incomplete. And some secondary help here for the defense in the nickel on third and long. Foles. And this is intercepted. And that should do it. 
It's Desmond Trufal. Then he will bring it back to about the 11 yard line. And that interception sets them up beautifully already in the red zone. And you can hear it all the way up here. Oski, Oski, everyone turned to block, find a spot. And now they're set up inside the red zone for their offense. So out come the Falcons now. And right now these guys, they're shuffling a little bit, maybe doubting because three straight drives have ended with him punting the football away. Yes, yeah, so you start pointing fingers at each other a little bit, asking a lot of questions. What are you seeing? What are you getting? Maybe trying to narrow down your playbook a little bit and maybe get simpler rather than more complex in order to try and fashion together a drive. The D can only stop it one more time as they take the knee. And play is stopped here. Timeout. It's the defense calling the timeout here. That'll be their third and final stoppage here as we step aside. The defense, they got a little bit of a breather. Now they're back and set as we resume play. The Falcons in victory formation as they take a knee. And with a third and 13 here, the defense in a dime look. Ryan heads down to a knee, and that should wrap this one up. A road win in the National Football League. Charles, you never take that for granted, no matter who you're playing, no matter where you're playing. You take it, and you run with it. <laughs> and you know you primed the pump all week in your own home facility. No one thinks we can do this. Only people who believe are right here in this room. And then you go on the road, band together, and get it done. So that's a wrap for Charles Davis. I'm Brandon Gunn, and this has been a presentation of the NFL on EA Sports. For more, check us out at easports.com. From Philadelphia, good night, everybody.